Welcome back to Tip TV, and it's Tip TV Education with Corbin Cordela, who is head of Tip TV Education, also founder of CCFX. How are you today, Corbin? Very good. Thank you for having me online. Right. I was just praising you offline. Uh, I don't want to do that again online, obviously, but uh, I really do find this very helpful indeed. And you know, there's lots of things that you cover and talk about that others, you know, just miss out and I, I think traders are going to learn or do learn a lot from what you do but uh, let's have a look at uh, everything about sharp ratios uh, fxmastercourse.com um, what are sharp ratios just quickly measures measures to find out how good you are but more importantly they allow you to compare yourself to what's out there um, if we go to the next slide the whole purpose of today is to ask or answer the question, how good are you really and do you have a clue? I mean, I think many people from great motivational speakers such as Tony Robbins or other people who look at performance and peak measures will tell you that if you don't measure what you do, you're just not going to know where you're going and you won't achieve the success you want. And so you need a measure and the sharp ratio is more or less one of the important tools in your toolbox that allows you to understand how you're progressing and allows you to compare yourself objectively to others out there. Because it's one thing to say, I want to make PNL consistently, and it's another to actually say, well, what does that look like? Am I killing myself here? Is my goal to make PNL consistently in a straight line or to make money? Because the two don't necessarily go hand in hand. Famous example is Buffett, tremendous guy, had you bought his share for $7,000 in the 80s, and that's at $220,000 but the guy has 50% drawdowns. So understanding the balance between the two is really important. I think a lot of people kill themselves over trying to be right but does, that mean, but does that mean, just, I mean, this is slightly off topic, but does that mean that he has 50% drawdowns along the way? Does that mean that one day, under a certain scenario, you could have 100% 100% drawdown, that's the end of Buffett? Well, it's, that is very interesting, and that probably compares so, you know, so intraday you, trading to long-term trading. Those 50% drawdowns happen over periods of months because he holds positions. And if you do have a 50% drawdown one day, it means you've leveraged up the wazoo, which is completely suicidal, one thing you shouldn't do. Right, okay. Well, uh, we can discuss uh, Mr. Buffett another time, perhaps. But, uh, um, right, so this, this idea, really, the sharp ratio, you're trying to work out, you're, you, you're on a journey from A to B to improve your trading uh, abilities and trading performance, and this, the sharp ratio is, is actually going to tell you where, where A is or where you are. Precisely, but more importantly, as you see, the sharp ratio is very much related to risk, and a lot of people are obsessed about controlling risk, but they never ask themselves why. Why do I want to control risk other than somebody told me why? The reason you want to control risk is because if you control your downside, something magical happens. You can start to use leverage and then you start to make real money. So the other thing about the sharp ratio, other than giving you a benchmark of performance, it gives you a confidence in your system, as we'll see, but it also tells you how much you should bet to ultimately make money. And of course, most traders will tell you, other than, yeah, it's intellectually great to trade, blah, blah, blah. It's also very important to answer your question, when will I double my money? And the sharp ratio actually is able to answer that question in a very objective way. Okay, let's uh, hopefully move along. Um... So. Introducing the Sharpe Ratio, it's nothing more than expected return divided by risk. And that seems like a fairly standard and obvious way to measure your performance. So if I expect to make $2, but I have to risk $10, then I have an understandable ratio there. So uh, it looks intuitive. It was developed by Mr. Sharp. A lot of people think that Sharpe Ratio is without an E and means sharp as the edge of a knife. No, it's Professor William Sharpe won the Nobel Prize in 1990, and he invented this idea in the 1960s as part of an idea of measuring or comparing returns of stocks in the market and understanding what asset allocation means. Now, how do you actually measure this? And we'll start out with an example to make it actually crystal clear. Um, this example was actually brought up by one of the people in my community, Stuart. Um, he asked, well, if I have this series of PLs, you know, down 20, up 50, flat, up 45, down 35, how do I actually calculate my Sharpe ratio? What's, well, what does expected return mean? And it's very easy. The average of your PNL is more or less what you expect to make, which is eight pounds. You just average up the numbers. And then your risk, and this is the important thing, your risk is how much do you swing away from your average? So in this particular case, if you lost 20 pounds and your average is eight, you means you swung away 28 pounds from your average return. And so if you look at your swings from eight pounds, 
that's on the third line. If you take the average of that, you get around about between 20 and 30 pounds, depending on how you measure average. If you're more technically inclined, you type those um, swings into a spreadsheet and use the standard deviation function, you'll come up with a number of 20. So we have my average return, which is just the average of my PNL, divided by my average swing, which is 20. So in this particular case, the sharp ratio is 0 0.4. And now the important thing is to start interpreting this number. What does it actually mean? What does it tell me? And how does it stand in relationship to other things out there? And the reason this latter point is so important because it makes you feel good. If you can compare yourself to a guy like Buffett, you feel good about yourself. If you don't know how to do that and you think you're the last bum on the street trading, trust me, your trading is going to go down the drain as well. Right, okay. So, um, next slide. Um, the one thing that people tend to gloss over is sharp ratio is very much related to time. This is more or less a tangential side point, but we mentioned the five trades over there and you got a number of 0 0.4. It's very important to bear in mind that when we talk about sharp ratio, we talk about annualized numbers. So a sharp ratio measured over a month is not going to be the same as over a year. And why is that? Well, think about it. If your expected return grows progressively up, you're going to have swings. If we go to the next slide, what you'll see is that the swings can actually swamp out your return. Um, what that really means is that by swamping out your return, you have noise in your PNL, and the noise ultimately kills the signals. So you have to wait a long time for you to gain confidence. And so the idea is very much like in stats, when you have a measure of confidence in your PNL performance, your sharp ratio allows you to do that. And that's really shown in the next slide on the chart, where we see that this is your PNL, let's say. You've been trading Euro dollar or whatever over a 12 month period. And you can see that your average PNL is the red line. It goes steadily up. But in the first three or four months, you've swamped up and down so much with your risk that you've been taken that you don't really know where you're going. So a low sharp ratio over a yearly period means that you need some time to gain confidence. The, sharp, the sharp ratio also, but it's getting rid of a lot of noise as well. I mean, it's actually showing you from after a certain period there that you're on the right track. The key which here you, is which you, which you, period. Which you wouldn't know. And, but the key point here is after a certain period, because you do have a lot of people that then dial in and say, I've traded for three months and I'm flat. Oh my God, I'm a loser. No, you're not. You, you, what you're really saying to me is that there's a lot of noise and that you probably have to wait for 12 months to actually understand what's going on. And that relates back to people want immediate gratification. Even in your trading, it's the long game you're after. You have to trade for 12 months, 24 months by controlling your risk to really understand if you're making money. And that's the real thing, why small sharp ratios are such an issue for people is because they have so much swings, it swamps out their real growth. Whereas large sharp ratios, big sharp ratios, remember it's return over risk, means that the risk is small, the swings are low, and you gain confidence very quickly. The problem with, with attaining high sharp ratios, and especially hedge funds that look for sharp ratios of the order of two or three, especially high frequency funds, is that they spend millions on in infrastructure. As we'll see later on, even with small sharp ratios, sub one, you can make a lot of money. And that's what people tend to forget. It's about the long game. It's about understanding that there is noise and you have to just stay with the long game and your strategy. Okay. Next slide. As I said, the other important thing is a sharp ratio is not just about gaining confidence in your system or understanding how good you are. It's also about telling you how much you should bet. And that's the great thing about that. Um, there is something called the Kelly ratio, and the Kelly ratio is actually derived from the sharp ratio. It's nothing more than the sharp ratio divided by the risk. So let's take the S&P, for instance. It has an annual risk, so an annual swing of 16%. It's got an average sharp ratio of 0 0.5 if you work out the numbers. So if you divide 0 0.5 by 0 0.16, you get three times leverage. So that means that you should trade the S&P three times leverage to get the optimal bang for your buck over the long term. Um, that means you're gonna have wild swings. So a lot of people then take a fraction of this ratio and maybe trade half of it rather than full. But this goes back to the concept I said at the beginning. If you control your risk or you understand the risk that you can potentially incur, like you know, a 50% drop in the S&P, then you also know how much you should leverage by, which is ultimately what you really want to understand. Because once you understand that, we'll come to the next slide now, you understand how to answer the question, how quickly do I double my money? And the sharp ratio will be able to answer that question. So the formula can be derived, but it's very simple. It's 0 0.7 divided by the sharp ratio squared 
adjusted for the Kelly fraction. So let's say we're trading half Kelly, so we're not trading three times, we're trading one and a half times, then the actual answer is that you will more or less double your money in five years trading at that leverage on the S&P. And that's a great thing to know because it gives you perspective. A lot of people want to double their money trading whatever over six months. Will that happen or not? Well, guess what? Looking at your trade log, work out your sharp ratio, and you'll know what should happen. And that goes back to how good are you really? Uh, if you don't know how good you're performing, you won't be able to hit your targets, understand what your targets should be. And ultimately, your targets drive you psychologically. Yeah? If you're trading 10,000 pounds, you would like to know by which point do I have 20,000 pounds, and it's not feasible, because the thing to bear in mind is, knowing your sharp ratio and the Kelly ratio, betting anything above the Kelly ratio is gonna drive you to bankruptcy, guaranteed. Yeah? So that's the other really important thing. All of a sudden, you understand how good am I compared to the market, how much money can I expect to make, and above which point am I gonna go bankrupt? Wow, that's just like wonderful questions, answers to know, because you have a framework all of a sudden to just one number. So if we go to the next slide, of course, this is the really important thing. Let's compare some sharp ratios against assets. So everybody trades equities, sharp is 0.5, and we've seen that even with that, you can double your money in five years. Buffett has a sharp ratio of 0.7. We were talking about Buffett just previously. He's got 50% drawdowns, but he still has a sharp ratio of 0.7, and certainly over the last um, 26 years, he's more than 20-fold or 30-fold of his money. Um, bond indices actually check out the ETF AG, which is the US iShares Aggregate Bond Index, at the moment has a sharp ratio of one, wonderful asset to invest in. And good hedge funds such as Trendfolds has have a sharp ratio of one. And these are guys that are raising $30 billion. So all of a sudden, you have a framework, where should I be? Between 0 0.5 and one is fantastic. Don't have to be a rocket scientist, I can trade out of my living room, apply any system that's more or less well known trend following, bonds, equities, et cetera. So one thing that I did want to mention is there are phenomenal hedge funds that have sharp ratios of two, and they're very rare. Um, and these guys more or less walk on water, and they've done it maybe for 20, 30 years. But they've invested millions of dollars in their infrastructure. And this is the key point to take away. You don't need to have a crystal ball to make money. And this is the problem that most people are obsessed with. They want every trade to be right. They want to make money in the next three months guarantee to the poorhouse. Forget about it. Take a perspective, compare yourself to what's considered good, use strategies that are well known, control your risk, leverage up the right way, and you're gonna make money. And the problem is making money is not about the system. It's about the person over and over and over again. Okay, all right. So uh, we can see more of that. If people wanna know more about this, where do they go? Just go over to my website. There's data, strategies, updates on a regular basis. The next article is coming out on how to trade economic releases, macroeconomic releases, and sign up to my newsletter. And the community is growing. People are reading, answering, commenting, and it's very vibrant. And the point about setting up the website is uh, when you trade in a hedge fund, what you really do is you sit in front of a computer screen and you just don't talk to many people. And being able to branch out and communicate to humans out there is fantastic, because guess what? people generate ideas and all of a sudden you tap into a network or you cross-pollinate. It's a wonderful, wonderful situation. On that note, uh, Corbin Cordillo, founder of CCFX and uh, head of Tip TV Education, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. We'll be back after the break.